These are the notes on 2.3 day one from your note packet. Uh, they were notes that were given on Friday. I'm just going to pare them down on Friday, Wednesday. I'm just going to pare it down a little bit. So we're going to learn two rules. One is called the product rule for finding the derivative of a product. Now you might, your gut instinct, just a second, I'm waiting for my pen to activate. Your gut instinct when you're multiplying two things two functions, might be to take the derivative of this, and then the derivative of this, and then say the answer is 2 cosine x. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. When you're taking the derivative of a product, you have to use what's called the product rule. And it looks like this. The derivative of f of x times g of x is f of x times g prime plus g of x times f prime. But that can be kind of difficult to remember. So more informally, what you might want to think of it as is first, d second plus second d first. And that kind of gets the format in your brain. And you can just kind of say that in your head while you're taking the derivative of a product. So. If I have x squared times the sine of x, which is the product of two functions, I would just say that my derivative is equal to first, d second, the derivative of sine is cosine, plus second, d first. And d first, the derivative of x squared, is 2x. Then I'm just going to write it a little nicer, x squared cosine x, sorry about that, plus 2x times sine x. And I'm done. So for number two, same deal. I'm taking the derivative of g, and g is the product of two functions. So I'm going to say its derivative, g prime, is equal to first. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So that's first d second plus second d first. The derivative of the square root of x is the derivative of x to the 1 half power. The derivative of x to the 1 half power is equal to 1 half x to the negative 1 half. And that one's a good one to memorize because it pops up so much. The derivative of the square root of x is 1 over 2 root x. So there's first d second plus second d first. Unfortunately, you're not allowed to leave this because it's the sum of two fractions. So you need to be pretty comfortable cleaning this up. And remember, to clean up the sum of fractions, we need a common denominator. And our easiest thing to do is just, Chris, cross all over going across on the bottom. And again, you have to ask yourself, is it done? And I asked some true false questions about this in class. I said, true or false, we have to get the root off the bottom. And the answer is false. You can go ahead and leave roots on the bottom. True or false, I should cancel these twos. The answer is false, because there's not a two in every term. You can't cancel out parts of sums and differences. So you lock and load it, and that's your answer. Moving on to the next page here. We're always going to take advantage of the constant multiple rule, which I have already given to you. It says that when you take the derivative of a constant times a function, you can bring the constant out front and just take the derivative of the function. The reason I'm telling you that again is because if y is equal to 5 times sine x, you might see that as a product and want to launch into the product rule. And that wouldn't be wrong. You'd get the right answer. But watch what you're going to get. First, d second plus second. And the derivative of 5 is 0, so this is just gone. So you really just end up with 5, the constant, times the derivative of the function. So when you just have the product of a constant and a function, use the constant multiple rule. So let's go look at letter A. We're going to take the derivative of y. I'm going to call it dy dx in this problem. 
I need to take the derivative of this product of functions. So I'm going to use the product rule. First times derivative of the second plus second times derivative of the first. The derivative of 2x is just 2, so just put that out front here. So that's first d second plus second d first minus the derivative of this part. And again, you don't need product rule on this one because it's a constant times sine x, which is the constant times the derivative of sine, which is cosine. These two cancel off nicely, leaving an answer of negative 2x times the sine of x. For letter B, finding the derivative... Again, I want to take advantage of the constant multiple rule and the power rule on this one. I, again, I don't need the product rule on every problem. So a lot of this section is going to be, do you know when to use it and when it's best not to use it? This is just the power rule. Bring the negative 2 out front, knock the power down 1, and then get rid of your negative exponent. The next problem, we are going to rewrite that and then differentiate it. Now, there's several ways I can rewrite it. Some people might say, hey, I see that as 4x minus 1 times x to the negative 1 half. And I tell you that's true. And maybe you launch into the product rule and you'll get it right. But what's easiest is remember our rule, if it makes a heart, not an upside down heart, but a heart with that monomial, that single term down on the bottom, you can really break that function apart. That's really 4x over x to the 1 half minus 1 over x to the 1 half. And so when I write this as a single power, it's 4x to the 1 half, because I subtract these exponents. And then it's minus x to the negative 1 half. And to do the derivative, or differentiate, I would just use my power rule. And I do 1 half times 4, which is 2x to the drop this 1, so minus 2 over 2, so to the negative 1 half. Then I'd bring this out front, double negatives will make a plus, 1 half x to the drop this 1, and it'd be negative 3 halves, I'd get rid of my negative exponents, etc. But again, Sometimes a rewrite is going to be helpful, too. On this next part, I'm going to do what's called a table derivative. And these are very common on the AP exam because they can test the fact that you understand the rule and the type of calculator or whether you have a calculator. It doesn't even matter because they're just testing that you're good with the rule. So when this says find f prime of 3, it means I need to take the derivative of f. And you'll look and you'll say, this is a product of two functions, which means I need the product rule. I just don't know what the functions are. Like, I don't know one of them sine or if one of them is x to the fourth. But I knew, do know my product rule. It says, first, d second plus second d first. So for me to find f prime of 3, I'm just going to place a 3 in for all the x's. I need to do g of 3 times h prime of 3. Again, I'm just replacing each x here with a 3, plus h of 3 times g prime of 3. And then I go to my table, and I say g of 3 is 4, h prime of 3 is pi, h of 3 is 3, and g prime is negative 2. So the correct answer would be 4 pi minus 6. Letter A, same thing. I'm looking for the derivative at 3. So I'm going to find the derivative. Although this is a product, I do not need the product rule. I just need to do first d second, because the first is a constant minus 1 half h prime of x, and the derivative of 1 is 0. To find f prime at 3, I'm going to do 4 times g prime of 3 
minus 1 half times h prime at 3. I'm going to go get those values off the table. g prime of 3 is negative 2. So 4 times negative 2 minus 1 half h prime of 3 is pi. So I'd have negative 8 minus pi halves. That leads us to our next rule. This page is just more about the product rule. You don't really need that. Um, the quotient rule looks pretty scary when you see it with all of its function notation. But if you can remember this little mnemonic, it's pretty helpful. It says low. Notice it ends in low as well. So when you kind of say it with a little mantra, you'd say low d high minus high d low, draw a line and square below. What that becomes when we write it out in our function notation is this. When you're taking the derivative of a quotient, it starts with low, and it goes low, d high, minus high, d low, draw a line, and square, sorry, that's a 2, below. So this one's considered the, oh, g of x is considered the low function, f of x is considered the high function, and we do low d high minus high d low, draw a line and square below. And that allows us to use the, pro, the quotient rule pretty nicely. The quotient rule is actually where we derive and prove the other trig function derivatives. You should already know that the derivative of sine is cosine and that the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Remember I told you Saint cloud, negative Saint, negative cloud. The derivatives go this way. But I never told you anything about the derivative of tangent because it comes from the quotient rule. So let me derive it for you so you will never have to. What I'm going to do is write tangent as sine I'm going to take a drink of water here for a second. As sine x over cosine x. And then I'm going to use the quotient rule on that quotient. Sorry, I just had to drink water. The quotient rule says that to take the derivative, I'm going to do low d high minus high d low. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, so that's going to become a plus. I'm going to draw a line and square the function below. So low d high minus high d low, draw a line and square below. Cosine times cosine is cosine squared. Sine times sine is sine squared. And sine squared plus cosine squared, hopefully you remember from pre-calculus that trig identity, is 1. So I get 1 over cosine squared of x, or equivalently secant squared x. So from here on out till you're done doing calculus, every time you're asked to take the derivative of tangent, it becomes secant squared. I proved it for you, so you will never have to run through that process again. I'm going to do the same with secant, and then I'll just tell you the other ones. So what I'm going to do is write f as a quotient. Secant is 1 over cosine. I'm then going to launch into the quotient rule. Here we go. Low d high Derivative of 1 is 0, minus high d low, so it's going to be minus a negative sine x. I'm going to draw a line and square below. This whole chunk is 0, so I really end up with sine x over cosine squared. And what I'm going to do is rewrite that. I'm going to split it apart as 1 over cosine x times sine x over cosine x. So the derivative of secant is always going to be secant x times the tangent of x, every single time. So when I go to the next page and I take a look at all six of my trig derivatives, these ones in blue are the ones you must know every time without looking at anything. Derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. I just proved that the derivative of tangent is secant squared. And the derivative of secant is secant tangent. These two that I'm going to put in green, they won't be on the AP exam. They won't be on my exam. 
but they'll pop up in your homework and if they do and you forget just feel free to go look the ones in blue you need to know without looking so cotangents derivative is really similar to tangents it's cosecant squared but it's actually a negative and if I were to derive it I'd write cotangent as cosine over sine and I would do the quotient rule with it and I would get that I just don't want to run through that again likewise cosecant's derivative is very similar to secant's it has a negative in front of it so there's the six trig derivatives be able to use them so a couple things before we move along the derivative of a product is the product of the derivatives that is false that's why I gave you the product rule <laughs> the derivative of the quotient you just do these separately and divide them that's false also that's why we have the quotient rule the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives what I'm saying is is the derivative of this just 12x squared plus cosine and the answer is yes for sums and differences you can just do them separately and add or subtract them but for a product and a quotient we need the rules we did today so here we go let's go practice our quotient rule that says that if I am doing the derivative of a quotient I'm gonna launch into the quotient rule if I unless I can avoid it but on this one there's no avoiding it my derivative with respect to T will be low D high minus high D low 3t squared I'm gonna draw a line and square below when I clean that up I have a negative T cubed sine T minus 3t squared cosine t all over t to the sixth power and then our question is always how do I know when I'm done and that's why we did the algebra review yesterday this you should be screaming to factor out some t's and then cancel them with some on the bottom I'm not going to do that because we spent time yesterday but I'm going to write factor and cancel and continue along your merry way let's go look at number nine and this is number nine in your homework and I am going to launch into the quotient rule because it's the quotient of two functions keep in mind if that had been upside down because it makes a heart I would actually break it apart and use the power rule because it'd be quicker but can't do it with an upside down heart so here we go we're gonna go low d high the derivative of root x is 1 over 2 root x you need to memorize that one so you don't have to do it over and over again low d high minus high d low draw a line and square below the calculus has just ended and now you're in cleanup mode how is the best way to clean that up first of all make sure you see these as fractions that's x cubed plus 1 over 2 root x minus 3x squared root x technically over 1 and that's all over this should be screaming complex fraction cleanup to you and I'm not going to do it because that's what we spent yesterday doing but you would go criss cross applesauce and then drop it down to the bottom and you would clean that all up we'll discuss this more on Monday but on this page again just remember that for a problem like this I wouldn't use quotient rule and actually when I do D low I get a zero and that's kind of a clue to me that I wouldn't use this I would consider this one-fifth times x squared minus 4x and then really I just have one-fifth times 2x minus 4 and I'm done it's a nice power rule problem same here although I could use the product rule on this distribute in and use the power rule and then we'll discuss the rest of these on Monday last step we did this one we did this one we're gonna look at C I'm gonna do a table derivative where I need to find F prime again at 3 so I'm gonna find F prime of X and then stuff a 3 in this is a quotient of two functions and I can't avoid anything I must use the quotient rule and it goes low D high is it in your head minus high 
d low, the derivative of a constant times a function, constant multiple rule is just two times the derivative of the function. So there's low d high minus high d low, draw a line, and square below. So I'll have 4 h squared of x. Then everywhere there's an x, I'm going to put in a 3, because it said f prime at 3. I'm going to consult my table and start replacing things. h of 3 is a 3. g prime of 3 is a negative 2. g of 3 is a 4. h prime is a pi. Oh, and there is a 2 in there, too. Right here, I forgot that, so I'm going to throw it at the end. All over 4 times h of 3 squared, which would be 9. So I'm going to have negative 12 minus 8 pi over 36. And again, you have to know how to transform that answer into other answers, just in case, again, you're doing a multiple choice question and you don't see this. Maybe they've played with it a little bit. Maybe they took a 4 out of every term. That's totally true. Maybe it made a heart, so they broke it apart. But it's all the same stuff, so be able to play with it. And last, letter D. Again, I am seeing a quotient. And I'm thinking quotient rule, but I'm also seeing that it's making this heart. So I'm going to break it apart first. I'd have F of x, I haven't taken a derivative yet, is g of x over g of x, which is 1, minus h of x over g of x. So when I take the derivative, the derivative of 1 is 0, and then I need to do minus, and then I do my quotient rule. So this isn't really going to do anything. I do low. d high minus high d low. I draw a line and I square below. Then everywhere I see an x, I replace it with a 3. Is it always a 3? No, but this problem said to find f prime at 3. And then I consult the table, plug it in, you can take it from there. I'm not going to finish that one. So the assignment was on page 100, and it's kind of a long one in I don't normally give a whole lot, so I don't feel too guilty about that. It's on page 126, and it's 1 through 53 odd. So keep in mind the answers are in the back of the book. If you're struggling to get one of the answers in the back of the book, remember CalcChat is a good resource for you. They show a lot of work on there. might be in a little different notation, so um, beware of that. But the worked out solutions are available there as well. That's the end. You guys have a good one. Peace out, Girl Scout.